Hello, this is Rick. Today we're going to use um, Fourier transform infrared spectroscopy to, this is this device here, there is a, a laser that comes out there and it uses infrared light to give us information about uh, chemical bonds and organic compounds. And I have, I was wondering what makes bags, like these old bags, see how wavy that is? What makes them wrinkle up and get wavy and kind of yellow and brown? I think I know. I'm going to look. So I happen to know, not very many people know when they have bags that are really old, what date the bag was manufactured. But at least I know for these particular books that these were purchased in 1982. I got, I have pictures. I had these books for my birthday when I was 11. So there's another book I had. I know that these books are about um, 29, 28 or 29 years old. And I'm gonna um, I'm gonna assume the bags are about the same age. We're gonna analyze them, analyze some new bags, and do a Mylar one and see what the differences are. What's the aging process? What's what's happening with these bags? Uh, hang on and see. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a brand new poly bag. And we're gonna put it on this diamond and we're gonna clamp it down. And then we're gonna come over here and we're going to take a sample of it. We're gonna call it poly one. And I'm gonna go okay. And then we'll start seeing the spectra come out in a second. We'll take several measurements and average it to see if it looks like polypropylene or not. And come on, there it goes. Looks exactly like polypropylene. So this is water. That's the um, CH bonding stuff. Here's the carbon-carbon stuff here. That looks a lot like it. So um, we'll let it clean up as it averages out because this water is somewhat in the that's mostly gas phase water. So it's like absorbed on the surface and we'll see what it looks like in a comes back and says it's atactic, which means like it's sort of not aligned uh, polypropylene. And that's what it is. So that's a perfect match for that. This is our stuff and that's what it is. And so we're gonna get, we're gonna do an old one now and see, see what happens. So here's an old wrinkly bag that is about 30 years old. And we're gonna collect and see what the differences are, and we'll get back. Well, if you look here, there's almost no difference at all between the two. So I'm gonna stack them here, and you can see. They look exactly the same, the old one and the new one. There's nothing structurally different about them. I'm gonna take the two and subtract them, and you'll see what that looks like in a moment. When I subtract the two spectra, I get this. There's some missing peaks here. Actually, there is a little bit of difference. Missing peaks here, and there's a lot more water. And then there's some other peaks here. Let's see if we can find out what the uh, subtraction result gives us. So, there is it. Like, apparently, the subtraction result is saying that there's more water, which we kind of knew, and it's not a lot of water. So I was wrong looking at the comparison. The computer found some differences, and. Since this is the difference, we're missing some bonds here, and we're missing some bonds here that are, looks like the atactic polypropylene. When, when you say you're missing stuff, it usually means there's something else added to it that keeps you from seeing it. So that's probably a contamination of something that keeps it from happening, or, or it could be breaking down of bonds. But it looks like this, there's more water in the surface, which I guess makes a lot of sense. Let's uh, close these windows and we'll go with or even an older bag and see. So this last bag is yellowed but not as wrinkled. This first one was really wrinkled and it looks like that's a lot of water in that polypropylene. It absorbs water. And this is a yellowed bag of unknown age. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, measure that one and see what it looks like. And this bottom one, which was the yellow bag, doesn't look to my eye to be very different, but let's see what the computer says. Very similar result, it just gives water right here. And it's just showing that there's less of some of these other bonds. Maybe they're breaking, maybe they're just obscured by other stuff that keeps us from the IR from penetrating. Um, but not a big difference. The, the yellowing doesn't look like it's very much different than the plastic. So it's probably, um, the yellow is what we call sort of universal yellow, meaning that you know, uh, most most contaminants are for the yellow color, so I probably picked up recent dirt that the IR is not seeing. But the bag itself, plastic, although it looks bad, is, does not appear to be harmed. Even the waviness appears just to be water. 
and I think that sometimes they react with water, the plastic, a little bit, and so you get this like a yellow film. But if you look at these three right here, if we stack them, uh, let's go to stack spectra. Even though there's probably 40 years difference in these bags total, uh, they don't look significantly different. I would say that they're not um, harmed in a way that's important. Let's do a mylar bag next. So here they all are. This is the mylar. This is the polyester. Now that's the mylar, and these are the polypropylene. So you can see there's a lot more CH interactions, carbon hydrogen interactions, and there's like virtually none here. Um, so, uh, well, they're here. Here's what mylar, here's what polyester looks like. So that's what the molecule looks like, but you can see there's not very many CH bonds right here. You see that? There's a lot of CO bonds we get, and that's called a carbonyl group, and there's a ring structure here, and that's what's showing up down here. These are very little CHs, but let's look at what uh, polypropylene is. You'll see the difference there. So check this out. See all this polypropylene? So you get the CH. Uh, the CHs on the left are those big peaks, and then these little these CC, these CC bonds that wag and stretch. That's what you're seeing on the, on the right. So this, as we look at our spectra, these are the CHs right here. And then these are the wags and the bends of the CC bonds, carbon-carbon bonds. And every time they branch a little bit, you see these little things are tend to look like a branch. Uh, there's not hardly any oxygen in it at all. I really should hope not. And so, and that's what we're seeing here is this uh, this ox this carbonyl group is showing up here for the mylar. And it's a, it's a tougher stuff. It's it's harder to react with uh, than this guy is. But um, so that's the difference in your bags. Um, they don't look overall too harm. I hope that was helpful. So I guess in summary, we've learned that even if a bag looks really bad, it's yellow and wrinkly, it just looks bad. It's not really harmed in a way that's important. Um, it, it looks like it's absorbed water on the surface. Maybe a little bit of cross-linking of the plastic with damage, but even at 30 years, this poly bag looks like garbage, but is still polypropylene and doesn't look like it's broken down at all. So. Um, Go ahead and keep using them if it's just for protection. Uh, obviously the um, polyester bags, the mylar is gonna last a lot longer, but there you go. I hope you learned something. Take care, bye-bye.